Welcome to the scene shop of Nashville Repertory Theater. My name is Gary Hoff, and I'm the head of design resident scenic designer for the Rep. Our shop is located on the campus of Nashville Public Television on Raines Avenue. We've been in this building for about 14 years. Um, this building actually was part of the original Central High School that was on this property, and it's the last building that still exists from that time. I'd love to show you around, so why don't we start off? So now we're inside our scene shop, and one of the first things you'll notice is our lumber storage. Um, we do probably 80, 90% of our building with lumber. Um, it's easier to use for most people. So we use a, quite a bit of lumber. We do some steel, which we'll see a little later, but um, right inside the door, we have our lumber. Um, we keep that close to the door because it's easiest to get on and off the trucks when they deliver it. We basically use two different kinds of lumber. This is called one by lumber. This is a one by four, which is actually three quarters by three and a half inches. Um, we'll use that for the majority of our building. We also use two by fours. And again, two by fours are inch and a half by three and a half. Um, we'll use that for platforming, um, for walls that need to support upper levels, um, for stuff that just needs to be stronger. But those are our two basic wood types. Um, we also have some three quarter ply down here. Now this is not where we normally store it, um, but it's handy to our saws. Um, this is actually the best way to store um, plywood or any sheet goods is vertically, but because of space, we can't do that. And I'll show you in a minute where we have to put ours. So this is our wood storage. So this is our table saw. This is one of our workhorses in the shop. We use this a, quite a bit. Um, the major use for a table saw is ripping. Now ripping is when you cut down the length of the board uh, with the grain. Um, it can also cross cut, which the name suggests is cutting across the grain, but mostly we use it for ripping. In fact, this is called a rip fence. It moves to different positions and then locks into place so we can determine how wide we want our piece. So the saw blade is, is worked by a crank on the front and you can crank it up to ever how high you want. There's also a crank that moves it to an angle. We can move up to 45 degrees um, to cut wood in an, at an angle as well. But this is our workhorse. We use this for everything. The runoff table you see on the other side of the saw is used for supporting the wood once it comes off the saw. So we don't have to have a number of people helping out when somebody's cutting. Um, so this, this makes us uh, have a space for that, those pieces to land. And it's also used as a workspace when the saw is not in use. So this is our table saw. So here we have our sanders. Um, this is the sander we use the most. This is called a belt or disc sander because it has both of them on this machine. The belt you see here, named for obvious reasons, because the, the sandpaper is actually a belt that runs around and sands the wood. On this side, we have the disc sander, which is a round sandpaper disc that also sands the wood. We use this to shape wood, to smooth wood, um, to make sure we get everything looking nice. Um, that's, we use this quite a bit. Now this is our other sander, it's called a spindle sander, um, and it's more specialized. Um, this is actually a tube of sandpaper, and it runs around and up and down as you're sanding, and this is for sanding inside pieces. Um, such as windows, cutout pieces, um, circles, that kind of thing. So you can put, a, put something over it and sand the inside. We don't use this one quite as much, um, but we do use our belt and disc sander quite a bit. So that's our shaping area with our sanders. So this is our sheet stock storage. Um, this is where we keep our large sheet stock. Uh, most sheet stock comes in four by eight sheets. Um, as I mentioned before, um, this is stored horizontally, which is not the actually best way to store it because it does tend to deform the wood. Um, but because of space, this is how we have to store it. We store a lot of different kinds of, of uh, materials. Um, we have plexiglass. Um, we have this wonderful stuff called bendy wood that actually is designed to bend around um, curves and circles. Um, we have masonite, um, which is a pressed wood product that we use for floors. Um, we have foam. Um, we use this a lot for carbon things. This is um, polystyrene foam that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's. We have pressed brick, 
um, which we also can get at Home Depot and Lowe's, and we do some coloration to it to make it look a little more real. Um, this is called Luon, which is basically a paneling, um, and we use this a lot to, to put in, on our flats and to create walls with. So we use Luon quite a bit. Um, this is called Ups and Board, and this is called um, Homosote. Um, these are both paper products, um, and they're used for a variety of purposes. Um, not the least is sound deadening. The homosote is really good for deadening sound. So we'll often put that under platforms or places that are making too much noise on the stage. Um, and then we have our three-quarter ply. Now plywood comes in a number of different widths. We normally use three-quarter for most everything for our platforms, um, but there also comes in quarter inch, half inch, um, a variety of widths. So we have used those over the years, but we mostly use the three-quarter for our platforming. And lastly is, is MDF, which is medium density fiberboard. Um, this is also a wood product, but it's a wood product created from um, grains of, of wood glued together and under pressure. The nice thing about this is it's got a very smooth surface and it has no end grain. Um, we use both three quarter and half inch quite a bit. Um, so this is our sheet good storage. Because we have to travel down to the Tennessee Performing Arts Center, we have to have all our tools with us when we go. So this is our tool case that we take with us down to the theater. And we have to make sure that we have all the tools we need when we go down there, because there is nothing down there when we get there. So this contains all of the tools we hope we're gonna need um, for the build to put in for the production. Um, each of the drawers is labeled, so it's easy to find things. Um, and we try to keep it as neat as possible so we can find all the tools very quickly. Um, we also have all of our um, fasteners, we have our screws, we have our staples. Um, so all of that stuff is, comes down with us to TPAC. Um, and also have our um, batteries for our, electric, our battery operated drills and saws. Um, and so all of this comes down with us to TPAC. Um, this is our traveling uh, miter saw, uh, which again, gives us a saw down at the theater to cut wood with. The smaller case is our rigging case. Um, and this is what we take down to do rigging. Now in our theater, we do not have a fly system that brings scenery in and out, but we do hang a lot of things from the grid, from the upper part of the theater. So inside we have all of the tools we would need to hang things. We have all of the hardware, we have um, pulleys, we have all kinds of different things. We have the steel cable that we'll, we'll hang from because um, we always are concerned with safety and we want to use the strongest um, possible product. So all of that keeps in this and this travels down with us to TPAC. So this is what we use to put our shows together um, down at the theater. So this is our second wood cutting area. Um, this is called a chop saw. Um, and we use this a lot for most of our building, and it mostly is cross-cutting. It's cutting across the grain. Um, what's nice about it is the saw does a whole bunch of different things for us in one saw. Um, we usually keep it in a lock position, which is, means the blade is down, and that's what it looks like when it's up. Um, and this guard protects the user from getting their hands cut. Um, and as you can see, it moves as the saw goes down and the saw can come forward and backward across the unit being cut. We also have it hooked up to a vacuum so we can get rid of sawdust and any particulates that come through the saw. Um, it also has the ability to turn at angles. Now it has certain angles set where it locks in, and those are your major angles of 45, 30, 60, 15. But we can also put it at any other angle and lock this down and then the saw stays in one place. So you can do that, but what we can also do is tip the entire saw. And the entire saw can tip to its side. With that, if we put this at an angle, then we're doing what's called a compound cut, which is cutting at two different angles at the same time. So this is a really useful little machine that we use quite a bit. Um, it gets lots of use. But this is our chop saw. Always try to keep it in its locked lower position for safety. And now we move to our metals area, and this is where we do our welding and metal production. 
Um, we don't use metal a whole lot, um, not necessarily because of cost, because wood and metal are becoming more and more uh, similar in price range, um, but because it takes a very special skill to work with metal, um, so it makes it a longer process. But something we use to do a lot with metal is create railings. Um, that gives us a nice, strong, safe railing for the actors, and it creates a very small profile so you're not blocking a lot of things. So we do a lot of uh, railings, but we also do a lot of other things, platforming, legs, um, any kind of thing that we need a lot of strength to. Um, we have our drill press, and this drill press can be used for wood or metal. Um, it's very high grade and very strong, so we can go through a lot of, of metal in one time. So this is our drill press. Um, this is our MIG welder, which stands for Metal Inert Gas Welder. Um, and it's what we do our majority of our welding with. Um, what happens is, is this is the trigger for the welder. A wire comes is fed through the middle and around the wire is inert gas, which are in these tubes, um, helps keep the oxygen from the weld and makes a stronger weld. Um, but as you see, we only have one of these, so only one person could be welding at any one time, so it makes it for a much slower process. Um, we also have an oxyacetylene torch. Um, this is for cutting metal, and that's what the uh, torch looks like. This trigger lets the gas in, and the torch flame will come out that end. So this is for cutting. We don't use that a whole lot. Now for safety, we have these screens. These are called welding screens um, because the arc from the welder is actually pretty dangerous for your eyes. So you don't want to be looking into an arc. So if you see somebody welding, don't look at it because it's really dangerous to your retinas. So we put this around the welding area when someone is welding to keep everybody safe and so that nobody's eyes are damaged. The welder themselves wears a mask with a hood that covers their eyes and protects their eyes, but this would protect the rest of the shop. So this is our metals area. So this is our tool storage room. This is where we keep all of our hand tools that we need during a production to build up all of our shows. So you'll find pretty much everything you would think of from a hardware store, um, screwdrivers, hammers, um, mallets, pry bars, um, all of that kind of thing is kept in this in a nice orderly fashion. Um, one of the things we use quite a bit is uh, battery operated screw guns. They look something like this. And the battery goes in the bottom. And we use this to screw things in and also drill. We can drill with these. We also have a fair number of pneumatic tools, which are tools that are run by compressed air. Um, we have a different, very different sizes. We have nail guns. We have staplers that have different size crowns. We have a small crown and a wide crown. We have brad guns. We have staplers and we have upholstery staplers. So all of these things would be run by air. But this is where we keep everything in and as much of an orderly fashion as we can so we can move quickly when we're building a shell. So this is our tool room. So this is our hardware hallway where we keep all the hardware we're going to use for a show. Um, so we try to keep everything really well organized. Um, over here we have our drywall screws, which we use quite a bit for in the production because we want to take our products um, apart because we have to take them downtown. And they come in different sizes and we keep them well organized so we can find what we need at any time. We also have all of the staples for our, our pneumatic staple guns. Um, we have the narrow crown up to the very wide crown. Um, and we have all the staples that go on to all the guns we use in the shop. Um, on this side in our file cabinets, we have all of our um, bolts and washers and nuts and all that kind of thing. So each drawer is specifically for one kind of a bolt. And then we have different lengths and each length is in a different bin in the uh, drawer. So we can find what we need pretty quickly um, when we go into these drawers. And each drawer has its own specific kind and shape of bolt. So we want to make sure that we can get to what we, we need pretty quickly. Um, and we try to keep a pretty wide selection of uh, bolts because we just never know what we're going to need. Um, behind you, you'll see a lot of boxes and file cabinets. Um, they're filled with every kind of thing you can think of that we might use on the stage. 
doorknobs, mail slots, um, electrical stuff, light bulbs, you name it, you'll probably find it in this back hallway. So this is where we store all of our hardware so we can move quickly and easily in our production and so we don't have to waste time trying to find things. So we try to keep things very well organized in our hardware hallway. So this is our prop shop, which is basically a smaller version of our big shop. And this is where we do all of our properties building. Um, we'll build props in here, we'll upholster furniture in here, um, we'll do detailed things in here. Um, it's a much more safe and, and uh, clean space than our regular shop. But if we need to, we can go to the big shop and do some cutting uh, and that kind of thing. But most of the small stuff is done in here. Um, as you see around me, we have a lot of storage. We try to keep as much product on hand as we can because you never quite know what you're going to need at any time. So we try to keep as much as we can. We also have some tools. We have uh, much of the tools that are used in the big shop are here, so we have that easy access. We have a small drill press. We have a scroll saw. Um, so we can do a small bit of wood manipulation down in here in the shop, but we take it to the big shop if we want to do anything major. But this is our prop shop where we keep all our props happy. So this obviously is our paint shop, um, and this is where we store all of our paints we use for our productions. Um, everything in the shop that we need for painting is right here. We have brushes, we have rollers, um, we have all kinds of tools to do painting, and a paint sink to clean up. So everything paint-wise that we use during a production comes out of this shop. So this is where we keep everything clean and straight and neat so we can find our, our paints, um, and this is where we clean up after we're done. So this is our paint shop.